uh, as it all comes together. So, uh, but we're looking forward to a great conference. Okay, <clears throat> enough of the, what do you call it, PA announcements. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to preach to you a message tonight entitled, very simply, The Final Shout. The Final Shout. Shout. Heavenly Father, God, again, we love you tonight <clears throat> for just a few moments, uh, a brief couple thoughts tonight. Uh, Lord, I praise you. I thank you for the services and the day that we've had already. Lord, now I need you, especially, Lord, just help my voice to hold out for just the next few moments. Lord, uh, fill me with your spirit, cleanse me of sin, free me of self. Help me to one more time preach, uh, if but for just just this evening, Lord, give me the strength. Uh, you speak through me and so that in, in so much that everything that's said and done, Lord, is for your honor and for your glory. Now we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and especially verse 16, it's interesting that, and it's, this has been debated for a long time. I, I, I don't know, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. There's a little bit of hint here that maybe leads me to believe one way and, and uh, versus some others. I would never split hairs over this or, or, or have any kind of ongoing argument with any pastor or any other Christian over this. Um, as to what exactly it is we're going to hear, uh, our ears are going to hear on that day, in that moment, when we hear the trumpet sound. But the Bible says that there are three things that will be heard. Now, what, what, what I mean by that is um, if, you, if you look at, at the, the verse previous that we started with here in verse 14, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, comma, and he goes on. That kind of leads me to believe that it's something that the Christian will hear. So I'm not so sure that the lost will hear it. They'll see it, but I don't know that they'll hear it. I don't know how that happens. Uh, some people tend to, some people believe that, that everybody will hear it. Um, I could care less about the lost people hearing it. I'm going to hear it, okay? Uh, now, if you want to debate whether or not whether everybody hears it, no, it doesn't matter to me. All I know is that if you put your faith and trust in Christ, you're going to hear three things. You're going to hear the trumpet sound. Uh, but then the Bible says that you're going to hear the archangel shout. But then the Bible says this, and notice in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Um, now, uh, uh, some people say that, the, uh, and you could interpret that, that the Lord it will descend to a shout. And I've heard that explained too. That, that, the, that you'll hear the ark, you'll hear the angels shouting, you'll hear the trumpet sound, and there will be shouting as the Lord descends. 
But if I'm reading that right, it says the Lord himself will descend with a shout. Uh, I, I kind of get the idea that Jesus is going to do a little screaming too. Uh, Jesus is going to shout. And, uh, and, I, and I like to think of that because uh, anytime you see a captain or somebody who's leading a charge or leading an army, it's whoever the general is, it's whoever the captain is, it's whoever who is in charge that's leading that charge, and they start with their, their command. And I, I, I like to think that Jesus is giving the commands here. Jesus has a, a, an army following him, an army of angelic beings. And by the way, don't confuse this. He only comes halfway. Again, don't, and I, don't put the rocks down. Just understand. We meet him where? We meet him in the air. Okay, so he didn't come all the way to the earth, not yet. He doesn't do that till after the tribulation. And boy, howdy, when he steps foot on the sand. One foot on the sand, one foot on the sea, and time shall be no more. And when he sets foot on this earth, listen, whoo, folks, he's going to rearrange some faces. Amen? But we meet him halfway. We meet him in the air. And the Bible says that when he descends, he's going to descend with a shout. But when I put this message together, I just kind of Googled the word shout and the times that people shouted. And, and I, I, pulled, I found three things, actually, that were very interesting to me in regard to this idea of shouting. And I want you to see a few things this evening, again, very briefly, for the time that we have this evening. But I want you to see the first one in Matthew chapter 21 and verses 8 through 11. Matthew 21, verse 8 through 11. The Bible says, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, to the Son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You know, I, I read this this morning, and that's interesting that they would say, Hosanna, blessed is he that, now watch, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. That's very interesting to me. They weren't calling him Lord. They were just saying that he was somebody who was coming in the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know if you all ever noticed that, but that makes a lot of sense considering what's fixing to follow up this, this instance. Uh, and by the way, one of the reasons, and if you continue to read as we continue to read it, and some of you say, that, that you know, I don't think that's really what that means. Well, it kind of explains that that's, I'm probably right as you move on down through the text. Because it says, and when he was come, in verse 10, and when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So what's going on, this is what we call the triumphant entry. In other words, Jesus had just spent the last three and a half years performing miracles, raising the dead, healing lepers, and his reputation has spread. And now he's coming back into Jerusalem for this last and final time. And word has spread that this guy who can do tricks and miracles has come. And they begin to now lay palms and branches. And they do say that he's coming in the name of the Lord. But notice, as I preached this morning, they're still not calling him Lord. They're not. Oh, this is a guy, this is a prophet. This is a great man. This is a good man. This is a good teacher. He's a great teacher. He's, listen, he, he, he does great miracles. He does all these tricks, and everybody starts to come unwound, and they begin to yell, Hosanna, Hosanna. You know, it's interesting that you can call him everything you want to call him, but until you call him Lord... Now, you stop and think about that for a minute. You can call him good. 
By the way, there's a lot of religions that say he was a good man. There's a lot of religions that say he was a good teacher. There's a lot of religions that call him a lot of things. But I'm here to tell you, folks, until you call him Lord, and they cried, and they yelled, and they, they did a lot of nice things, and they shouted, Hosanna! They shouted at Jesus. Then, just a few chapters later, in Matthew 27, verse 19, they shouted at Jesus again. In Matthew 21, they shouted at his entrance. In Matthew 27, they shouted at his examination. Notice in Matthew 27, verse 19, when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, this is in, by the way, it's in regards to Pilate, not Jesus, okay? <clears throat> his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas, Notice that next phrase, and destroy Jesus. You ought to look up that word destroy. That word destroy does not just mean kill. It means annihilate. It means hurt. It means torture. Folks, that's, pretty, that's some pretty hateful words to say that you want somebody destroyed. Verse 21, the governor answered and said unto them, whether of, the whether of the twain will that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with this Jesus which is called Christ? Now notice this. And they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. One minute, he's coming into the city and they're screaming, Hosanna! And now they're shouting at Jesus again. Kill him! Crucify him! The shouts ring out the, the governor, Pilate, even gave them an option to give them Barabbas. There was a tradition that yearly they would release somebody who had been convicted back into the public, which I never really understood that. But he offered them the worst criminal they had. They thought, surely they'll pick this man. I'll, I'll just give him the worst guy I have incarcerated. I'll give him the worst uh, criminal I have locked up. And surely they'll let Jesus go. Surely they don't want this man Barabbas running around. The hatred and the screaming and the yelling was so intense. They chose Barabbas. Crucify him. What, what then shall I do with Jesus? I mean, what do you want me to do with him? Kill him. Crucify him. Destroy him. They shouted at Jesus at his entrance. They shouted at Jesus during his examination. Did you know that they shouted at him at his execution? Look a little further down in that chapter of Matthew. Chapter 27. Notice verse 38. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. And if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocking him, 
with the scribes and elders said he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver, let him, deliver him now. If he, will, if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. It's interesting that people shouted at him at his entrance. They shouted at him during his examination. Jesus is hanging on the cross and they're still shouting at him. They're still accusing him. They're still reviling him. They're still making fun of him. They're still mocking him. Jesus entered. I'm not completely sure that they knew why they were saying Hosanna. And I understand that. That, that message has been preached in, on Easter's over and over again and, and the palm branches and the significance of it. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I believe we ought to call him Hosanna. I'm just not sure that the people that were crying Hosanna knew what they were saying within their hearts. At least not all of them. And yet they shouted at him. During his examination, they shouted at him. They accused him. Jesus is being executed, hanging on the cross. And they shouted at him. <laughs> you know, even today's day and time, and if you understand, if you're looking at our text, you'll see where I'm going with this. You know, there are still people shouting at him. There's, listen, uh, there are people mocking God. Uh, I, I've seen some of this, guys. It, 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 it really is just as sickening as it can be. Um, I remember, you know, when I, when I grew up in the 80s, they used to have this thing called backmasking, you know. Uh, you'd play records backwards. You'd, all our kids were in the bedroom rolling our record players backwards trying to hear something. Um, you know, back then, they would at least hide it. Today, they're not hiding nothing. Uh, and this, this thing that just happened at the Grammys, it's still making... You, you know how bad it was that even the, even the ungodly are saying we might need to censor some of this. That's how bad it was. The Grammys were so disgustingly awful this past time that now they, it, it went so far that now they're having to put uh, filters on and, and saying there's filters and guidelines now that we have to follow in years to come. That's pretty bad. <laughs> when the ungodly start filtering ungodliness, that's pretty bad. And it did cross some lines. I, 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 it did cross many lines. But it was filthy. I mean, it was just filth and disgusting. And in the interviews that followed, they were shouting at God. They were shouting at Jesus. What do I mean by that? Still shouting at him. Still cursing him. Still mocking him. Still mocking Christianity. Still mocking the church. Still making fun of the church. Look around you this evening. And by the way, we're not any different than any other church tonight. Boy, you know, there was a time that even Sunday evenings you could fill a church house. And I hate to say this, and I'm, I'm not being ugly towards beams at all because I love it, but it's like if you want to fill up a church house, you've got to do something like we're doing with Beams Conference. You've you got to have a special service. You've got to bring in this speaker. You've got to bring in that speaker. You gotta, boy, you've got to bring in some good music, amen? And I'm not against good music. Praise God for the Miller family. Y'all are going to have a great time with them. Uh, listen, we got great music. By the way, we got great music of our own right here. Praise God for that. Praise God for young people. Praise God for all that. But good night. You know, you would think that, that you could just put a sign out front that said, we're going to have church, and people would say, let's go have church. Hey. Not today. 
I mean, people just snub their nose up at, at church, at Christ, still mocking, still making fun of. I mean, they screamed at him when he entered into Jerusalem. They screamed at him as he was uh, uh, being um, examined. They screamed at him even while he was dying on the cross. And people are still screaming at him today. But listen, and I'm done with this. For all of time, people have been screaming at Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to get the last shout. You can scream at him all day. You can snub your nose up at him now. You can ignore church. You can shut your Bible. You can make fun of it. You can shout at him. But the day he's going to come, he's going to come with a shout and it's all over. Right. Hey. <laughs> what do they say? It ain't over till the fat lady sings. There's another saying, he who laughs last. Laughs best. You all know what I'm talking about? And I'm here to tell you, this world can scoff all they want at my Savior. You can scream at him. They've been screaming at him for thousands of years. They screamed at him when he entered into Jerusalem. They screamed at him uh, while he was being examined. They screamed at him while he was being executed. But Jesus is going to shout, get the final shout when he re-enters. <laughs> He's going to shout. And when he shouts, and by the way, when this world shouts, we got to do it over and over and over and over again. He's going to shout one time. And it's over. It'll be over. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day that I hear the trumpet sound. I keep trying to picture in my mind those three sounds, a trumpet, the archangel, and then hearing my Savior's voice. Some say the book of Revelation, that shout will be, Come up hither! Or I like to, I feel like in Texas we're going to hear him say, Y'all get on up here. You know, that's the gift of tongues, right? Everybody heard it in their own language. Down here in Texas, we're going to hear him say, Y'all, come on. <laughs> Got some chicken and dumplings going on up here. Cornbread. I don't know exactly what that shout entails. Like I said, Revelation says, Come up hither. I know this, that if you're a child of the king, you're going to hear him say it. But I'd encourage you tonight. Now listen to me, and I'm done with this. You're here tonight, and you're not saved. Whether you realize it or not, you're shouting at him. So I, I'm, not, I'm not physically shouting at him. You are in your spirit. You might as well be one of those people standing on the road just saying good things, but not calling him Lord. You, listen, you might as well be one of those people accusing him, shouting at him. You might as well be walking past the cross and mocking him as he's hanging there. You might as well. Because until you call him Lord, until you call him Lord, but praise God, he's going to get the last shout. He's going to get the last shout. Heads bowed, eyes closed, standing to your feet for just a few moments tonight.